Hi, Akwaba. Welcome to the Melinated Kitchen. I am Abna Nyakwa. Thanks for watching last week's video. I got lots of likes on it. Today, we are working with the wonder plant. We are making a palm nut soup. Palm nut soup is a delicacy for a lot of tribes in Ghana. The Ghans use it for their home work festival. We have the, they call it a mewonu. The Akans, we call it a benkwine. And we have it with our fufu. We enjoy it with lots of things. So we are going to the kitchen and we are going to prepare our palm nut soup. Before we go, please like, subscribe, and share our video. Let's go back to the kitchen. These are ingredients for our palm nut soup. Basically, you have, you can use any fish you want. We have four different kinds of fish today. We are using herrings, smoked herrings. We have a tuna, smoked tuna. And then we have a smoked safro and then smoked doctor fish. So you can use any fish of your choice. We are not adding any meat. We are going healthy as usual. So we are just sticking to our fish and that's what we're using today. We have our chopped onions. This is one medium sized chopped onions. And then we have our small, three small onions with two tomatoes, one pepper, and then ginger. And then these are the side adds. You can do without, but trust me, it goes very well with the soup. So we have our okra, we have our garden eggs, and then we have our good old prekese. Prekese is really packed with a lot of nutrients. We will, we will have a whole video on prekese someday. And then we are adding our turkey berries. This is also called, um, it's called a bedro in some places. And then we, the quills, we call it, we call it kantose. Others also call it quillsuswa. It's packed. I repeat, this is highly packed with iron. We'll also do something on um, on these turkey berries in the in the future. The most important ingredient is our palm nut. This has been crushed or it's been taken from the its husk and it's been pounded. So this is how we get it. And I'm going to show you from here how we are, how we, we're going to take the husk and the kennel out and make our soup with it. So normally we boil the turkey berries with the palm nuts, but I didn't do that this time. So I just want to boil it separately and then I would blend it later on. I've added more water and there's a reason for that so I'll let you know so now this is our palm kennel our palm nuts that has been pounded and we you can see we still have the palm kennel the palm fruit itself with a palm tree you don't throw anything away from the roots to the stem to the branches the fruit itself, you, there's a use for every bit of it. That's what's called the wonder tree. So now we're going to pour. This was in the was it was in the fridge. So I'm going to pour hot water just to make it easy for me to take the nut out and then mix it up. 
So it's there's hot water, but mind you, it's frozen too, so it will dissolve quickly. So you see this. I remember when we were kids, making palm nut was a whole um, a whole day's affair. You start by boiling the palm. You just you start by taking the palm from the husk, and then you boil it. After boiling, you have to pound. You pound it, and then you get to this stage that you have to take the trying to get the juice out of it. So I need to add a little more water. These days you don't have to go through all of this, but I tell you it's always better to have it fresh to start from the scratch and do it the way it's always done. You can always you can also have it those um outside if you can if you don't have access to it you can always get the canned palm from the african shops those ones have already they've already nicely processed it so you don't have to go through this and it's easier and faster but nothing beats doing it the original way so now we've got everything is nicely nicely done so we have to take the juice out of it now this is the chaff that we got from the palm nut and this does not end here you can dry it it's used as sponge is used to light when you dry it it's a good stuff to start your fire with you just put this on your co your charcoal and it burns like fuel this is also used for other things as well we will also do a whole um video on palm nuts on the so whole palm tree we'll do a video on the palm tree so i just have to take all of these out I'm separating the chaff from the kennel. Now, this, this is a palm kennel. And this also does not end here. You crush it and there's the fruits inside. The nuts, I don't know whether it's called the fruit or the nut, but you crush it and you get the um, nut. And that is what is used for the palm kennel oil. So from one from one plant you can get your cooking oil you can get your red oil palm oil and then you can get the palm kennel oil as well and then the husk itself is also used for other things so you never throw anything away when it comes to the palm fruit so this the kennel i'm also putting it on the side and we'll use it for something else later So, I see it for the first time. I've taken most of the chaff out. So this is our first sieving. So it's ready to go, but I always want to do a second one just to get just in case something escaped I just want to get everything back so I'll do a second sieving I'll sieve it for the second time so now this is the third time I'm going to take it to the sieve and then the third and final one just to make sure I get all the chaff out it's not really nice drinking your soup and having the chaff in there. I 
our fish goes into our pot that's the safro now our doctor fish uh tuna all smoked and then our herrings so our fish goes in next goes our onions our chopped onions so we just put in our chopped onions we put our tomatoes our onions our ginger i'm just putting it where i can find because i'll come back to it and this pepper it's a friend gave it to me and it comes from the caribbean and it's very spicy hot so you only need to use just about half you cannot take it when you use the whole the whole pepper so i'm just cutting half just cut half of it and that's what i'm going to use you pour in a little water sprinkle a little salt and you turn on your gas now we're going to do some blending but our turkey berries has been on just boil it for five minutes and that's it so I don't throw the water away because it also has some of the nutrients I remember when we were kids and we our blood level was low my auntie would boil the will boil turkey berries and then pour it out for us to drink as tea and trust me within a few days when you go back to check your 8B would have gone back to normal. So this is also a tea from the turkey berries. When you boil the turkey berries, this is a tea on its own. And I'm just going to enjoy it whilst I make my soup. So now it's boiled. You can tell our onions have gone soft and our tomatoes and all that too. We're going to blend that's the pepper. You take all those bits out. We're going to blend it all up. Plus the tomatoes. And then uh, onions. Plus our turkey berries. So just as it is. Add some water and blend. So now we have our fish. So we pour the blended stuff over it. Just to get everything out. So at this point, our soup is almost um, done. I just have to add the juice from the palm fruit, and that's it. So the initial things are boiling, and we are going to everything is simmering nicely. So we are going to add our palm. Now this, we just because we've strained it already, we just pour it add it to the soup we're going to leave it to simmer cook for about 45 minutes by then the palm nut will be ready we'll have our oil on the surface and that is one of the signs to let you know that your soup is ready. So we'll leave it on for about 45 minutes and we'll, keep, we'll come back to it. But I'll, 45 minutes and I'll just 
keep the heat on low. Now, we, this is packed with a lot of nutrients. We've got the turkey berries. We are going to add our prekese. We have our palm nut, which has the good fat, good oils. It is packed with vitamins. We have vitamin A that is good for the eyes. We are getting the oils from the fish and this, you can't beat it. I just use my sort of mini hammer to crush one of the kernel from the nut. So you see how thick the kernel is? This I know is used for lots of things, but I'm going to get you all the info another time. So this is also still not thrown away. It's also used for something. And then this is what you get from inside. And that's how it looks like on the inside. And this is used for oil. It's also used for the palm, this is what is used for the palm kernel oil. From this stage, you dry it, you roast it, and then you mill it and boil it again, and then you get the oil settling on the surface. I remember when we were kids, we used to, my grandmother made us crack all the nuts and you can imagine how long it would take. But this, even just as it is, can be eaten like that. Can be eaten like that. And it's, it tastes a bit like the fruit, the coconut fruit, the white bit of the coconut. It tastes it's something like that. So the oil, the palm kernel oil, it's also similar, tastes similar to the coconut oil. So that's something new that you've learned today. And I ask, I'm going to dry it, and it will also be used for, to light our fire. We could also use it as, um, you know, for in our gardening, to hold some of our orchids. And there's a lot you can do with it. You never throw anything away when it's got to do with the palm fruit. As you can see, our oil has started forming on the surface, so very soon our soup will be ready. But I need to add a few more things. So we add a garden eggs and throw that in. And then we add a crew and then last but not the least our precursor it's a bit tough that's how the inside looks so we just put a precursor in as well and we'll leave it on for a few more minutes get more oil at the surface and our soup will be ready so now our soup is ready you see the oil on the surface this you scoop and you have your red oil. So this is how red oil is made, but in a different form. That's what I use for my chickpea stew, which I'll have with my fried plantain later. So this goes with fufu, it goes with rice ball, it goes with yam, boiled yam, boiled plantain, just plain rice it goes with gari anything you want to have it with palm oil palm palm nut soup is fine with it so i'm just going to try my soup but i'm not adding any carbohydrate to it i'm just trying the soup as it is i'm taking my i add my okra and my garden eggs i just want to take the oil from the surface 
I don't want too much oil. I'll scoop the oil later. So what I normally do is that the day after, when I take, I put the soup in the fridge and the day after the oil hardens up. So it's easier to take it. My soup is ready. I'm just having the soup without anything because I'm kind of full up now. This is not too light, it's not too thick, just the way I like it. So everyone is invited. I'm not mentioning names today. You are all invited. Perfect. Perfect. The soup is nice. The, the soup is very tasty. I like my fish. I like my garden eggs and okra. I'm going to have it with my rice bowl tomorrow. And this is packed with all the nutrients I need. It has this brekese, the turkey berries, and the palm nut itself. It has protein, it has vitamins, and that is good for us. So, gone are the days when people used to say, used to condemn um, palm nut soup as fatty and oily and all that. It has the good fats, and it has the best oils that you can find. So, always enjoy your palm nut soup and tell us about it what you had it with so till we meet again next week on the melinator kitchen it's bye for now once i finish my palm nut soup bye <laughs>